All right, we have audio, awesome. All right, um, first of all, uh, Eddie is uh, one of our customers and he did a very good prep in the demo, so it saves me a lot of time. Um, uh, the good news is it actually works, so it's, it's not fake. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a quick talk uh, over um, on the simulation uh, exercise that we do at Cisco and I'm gonna plug it in all the way to uh, Sonic VS uh, and GDP for the s community. Uh, first of all, before I start, I definitely wanna, I'm just one person, I have a team behind me, and there's multiple teams that are contributing different ports, portions in the SDK, other areas of Cisco. Uh, some of them are actually here. Just wanna recognize this, it's the community effort, even within Cisco, to, uh, to actually show you what I'm gonna go through today. Um, so I'm just gonna go over uh, our internal simulation requirements, how we go about setting that, uh, how that ties into our NPU data plane strategy, then into system simulation. I'm using 8000 as the vehicle for that conversation, and I'll um, end with the, um, the sonic virtual switch uh, with our data plane. Um, so one of our requirements uh, is fundamentally to build digital twins of our hardware, and that includes all fixed and modular chassis. And when I say module, I'm talking about 18 slot line cards, two RPEs, and that's one node, and then we build multiple of those in a topology. Um, the goal, of course, is to accelerate software development uh, and testing, so that's one of our um, requirements. Um, the other requirement is that the software needs to be transparently uh, go back and forth between hardware and sim simulation, so it has to be the same image. We cannot have a separate target for simulation, different target for hardware. It just will work very well. Um, the other requirement is that um, the same thing on the test side. The test doesn't want to have two, te two environments, one for simulation and one for hardware. So their requirement is one test framework runs across simulation or hardware. That means that the performance of both control plane and data plane have to be um, very, re you know, very, very decent in order for them to run it with least amount of modifications. Um, so the control plane is an understood problem. You know, you can put a NOS inside of a container, you can put it inside a VM. That's uh, understood the technology. Uh, what I'm gonna focus on a data plane. And I'm gonna mention RTL first. We hardly use RTL as a software development environment. I mention it uh, mainly uh, because sometimes we do a driver testing there, uh, but it's prohibitively uh, complicated to use and also expensive from a licensing point of view if you ever did, uh, did ASIC designs. Uh, the, the reason I mention it is because the next point, hardware accelerator actually is a good solution. Um, you can actually achieve quite a bit there, it's accurate. Um, there's a lot of pros for that, and I know a lot of uh, ASIC uh, chip companies use that methodology. Uh, the downside is you have to wait for the RTL to be done. So you have to wait very, very late in the design cycle to actually leverage that solution. It does take a lot of energy and effort to actually build it. You know, you have to port to FPGAs, and it's expensive. So it's not something you can put to your software CI, CD with you know, 500 software developers. So it's not, it doesn't scale. So what do we do? We, we transition to basically building a C model, C, C++ model of the hardware. Now it depends who's driving that effort. Um, if it's the silicon team, it's gonna be biased towards silicon use case, like as a reference model for the ASIC. Um, if it's driven by software, slightly more software-centric. Um, but if you, if you look at the uh, design, you will see that for every block that you see in the microarchitecture specification, there'll be a C model, a C++, a C++ object for it. Um, we've used this successfully in the past. We've hit about 15,000 packets a second. I know ID wanted 1K. We hit 15,000, you know, like a five, six years ago. Um, and the good thing about that is uh, the software folks can actually get performance data out of that. So you can actually get um, realistic data of what the performance will be uh, of your microcode, your P4, whatever your data plane software is, uh, programmable software is. Uh, the other thing is if you don't use it for that, you can still get traces, you know, highly accurate traces. The traces can be fed into a performance analyzer and it gives you some good numbers. So that's the classic use case of the, um, the accurate one. Uh, what we've centered around on the 8000 on the Silicon One architecture is to go one level higher um, and uh, basically implement the architecture and the, you might say the P4 language and the runtime, but we, the implementation we leave free to implement as we wish. And but that freedom to implement the design uh, the, you know, optimized for software allows us to achieve uh, you know, roughly 600,000 packs a second. We've, we've hit a million above and then we can probably go higher. As Eddie wants only 1K, so I mean, we're done probably at this point. So, um, so that's good. Um, and th this, at this point, most software folks say, okay, we're good. We can actually run the test suites. 
uh, and we're in business. Now, um, up to this point here, um, the key point is I've actually maintained architectural compatibility, right? So I'm actually Silicon One compatible. All the SDK runs, all the software runs uh, as if it will run on the hardware. Now, certainly you can switch over to a VPP or any other data plane you wish. You can integrate that with Sonic. You can integrate that with XR or whatever you like. But at the end of the day, from our point of view, that's not the product. At the end of the day, um, unless you're doing a software virtual router, which is a legitimate product, uh, you're going to go to hardware. So that's your end game is hardware. So we designed for that, and that's our you know, internal requirement. I think externally, uh, probably folks are, um, will appreciate that end game. So on the um, MPU, and I would call it NGDP internally, just the buzz name. I don't think I had a marketing guy help me there, but anyway. Um, it's the basis of all SDK development. So all the software, all the forwarding code, uses simulation as the basis. And of course, we'll build a system simulation around that too. Um, has the same, same tables. Anything that's software visible from the oh, uh, SDK software, we actually implement. So that's obviously required. Otherwise, the SDK will fail. Um, the models also match the sil different generations of Silicon One architecture. So there's uh, like three or four different generations, more in flight. Um, we adhere to each one. So we configured it that we're running, let's say, the Q Q100, Q200, whatever, P-series, et cetera. Um, I mentioned 150K here, even though you just saw me say 600. The reason I say is because um, normally we will tone down the number, uh, the PPS, um, or basically give it less compute power because we're trying to put a, like as Eddie was mentioning, a 7, 10 node topology. It has multiple NPUs on per, per router, fabric cards. And so we want to balance how much compute we want to give to the NPU. So if we're in a race to, you know, like a benchmark, we'll give it as many compute power as, you know, as much power as it wants. But normally we'll tone it down and still meet software requirements. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, we've integrated to many environments. So on the system level, uh, obviously I said we're going to, you know, we want to build a digital twin. What that ha what it gives you is the inventory matches. So if you show platform, show inventory, it matches a lot of software that's doing um, probing of the, you know, the network. We'll want to know what what equipment you actually installed. So the uh, the um, uh, the show platform will match hardware. So basically, it's, it's the inventories, all that stuff will match. Um, the other things will also minimize the network operating system software. So one of the things that's important is, one of our goals is, you know, if you look at the NOS, we want to take it down as, you know, cover as much of the software until we get to the point where we got to switch to a simulation, you know, like the way at the bottom. And the more we can cover in the, uh, in the in NOS, that's basically better test coverage. The more abstract I do the platform, I'm, I've had to cut it off further up in the food chain, which means I'm not really covering as much. Um, so that's one of the goals, as you said, code coverage. Um, and of course, same image runs on hardware and simulation. So you can go to cisco.com, you know, pick your sonic image from there, 8000 or XR or whatever, and you download it and it will run on the simulator. So you don't have to, you, there's no special build uh, for that. And one of the side effects that's, um, you know, it's probably missed many times is that because we're doing the engine, um, we don't change when software changes. So once we build the platform, uh, it's like uh, emulating the ARM instruction set. Uh, for the next decade, if there's feature development software done, we don't do any changes. The engine stays the same, continues to run the software. So once we're done with platform, we just basically move to the next platform, even though uh, software development goes on probably for a decade. Um, if you want to see a picture diagram, this is just a single node, but you, know, you can imagine if you're doing a, a modular chassis, you're, you're talking about 18 of these you know, instances uh, going horizontally. Um, we prefer to be running on bare metal because we use virtualization. And if you put, a, put us inside of a cloud VM, that's going to be nested virtualization. It runs, but you know, obviously not the best. Uh, we have both ARM and x86 uh, you know, coverage, so we can boot uh, you know, flavors of that, that runs on ARM or x86. And then we, of course, model. This is the key part of the chassis modeling. So we model the FPGAs, fan sensors. Uh, to the level that we need. Now, we don't need everything, so you have to be very, um, there's an art to selecting what you need to implement uh, for the OS to run. Now, of course, then we have the silicon MPU, which is the key part of the story. That's where the program of all the features are uh, done. Uh, above that, obviously, you need uh, O&E Grub, uh, your famous Linux distro. Um, we run all flavors of Cisco products, like you know, XRXC for different targets, campus data center, Sonic, of course. Uh, and of course, you could do your own OS, uh, which is, you know, if you did your own Sonic. Um, as long as you have the SDK, uh, you could probably run on our platform. Um, 
We also include, mainly for the customer, I mentioned it here, is that, you know, we use this, everyone uses it, you know, we do topology description in YAML, we provide um, interactive library, so you can launch simulation, do lifecycle management. The same library integrates with test infrastructure, so if you have your own test automation, you basically glue it in. We support, um, I already mentioned, modular chassis, uh, third-party routers, anything that fits in a VM, we can integrate, uh, commercial or open source traffic generators, and this, this whole ecosystem, like, you know, like, you know, like software development in the box, we actually provide to our customers. So some of our customers take it the whole thing uh, in one shot. Um, some, some of them just will take a component and integrate with their own environment. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, results matters. Uh, so we're running about 400,000 simulations per month, uh, maintaining our CI CD, you know, maintaining the software quality. Um, so obviously it's a significant portion, you know, strat part of our strategy for software development. Obviously we still use hardware, you know, but I get asked all the time, can I save a lot of money? I don't do use hardware, and I say, no, no, please don't do that. Um, you know, my lawyer says, please use hardware at the end. So you still need the, the hardware coverage, but this will take off you know, a lot of the uh, early development. Uh, this has also facilitated the Cisco, like 90 days uh, product cycle on the XR side, um, where we're able to develop test and release uh, in the uh, far more frequently than in the past. Um, we also use this environment to co-dev with customers. So a lot of our customers have a copy of this software and we go back and forth, um, uh, you know, exchanging uh, patches, uh, releases, EFTs, et cetera. So it's a nice conduit for that exercise. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, we provide, uh, provide that ecosystem and many of our customers will, um, there's many use cases, training, everything, but a lot of them actually integrate it in their CI, CD. So the first thing they do, they may have a topology of uh, multiple vendors uh, and they'll do in interop. And then once they're co uh, comfortable, then they'll put it on the ne production network. So that's a classic use case. So that's not my alarm. All right. Uh, so probably, you know, first of all, I haven't mentioned AI, just like Eddie, I didn't mention AI at all here. <laughs> no AI here. So this is like way at the bottom layer. Um, so, you know, this is all great, so what, is, what does it do for you? So what we looked at is, uh, thus far, uh, we have given you a uh, binary NOS, you know, like XR, XC, Sonic, and we give you a binary simulator. That's great, you know, that's, you know, we use it internally for development, but we're not giving you that framework externally. So we said, okay, how do we get uh, outside software development using some of our IP? So the way we've done it is, um, we, we said, okay, let's take Sonic VS standard, uh, virtual chassis, and let's augment it with the uh, Silicon One data plane. So we're integrating, so basically we're giving you um, the Sonic Silicon One derivative virtual switch um, code. Uh, we'll give you the SI SDK, that com the commercial grade. So this is exactly what goes on the hardware. It's the same binary, same Debian package that goes on the hardware, and the Silicon One data plane that you need it underneath it to support that. Um, and of course, a little bit of patches and build scripts, and you can build your own Sonic VS with our data plane. Uh, and you will get it in disaggregate form. Um, now, implementation, I didn't go into all the diagrams. I'm sure you can dissect it yourself once you get the tar file. Um, but uh, we, ch we put the data plane inside SyncD, debatable. You could probably put it outside. There's different ideas there. Um, uh, but currently, we put it there just to minimize uh, the amount of changes. It makes it easier for us right now. But we're open to that. And ho I'm hoping by the end of this year, we can actually put it out, uh, make it available widely. Um, as far as testing, um, I just want to show you how much testing it goes through before what you're getting. Um, so on the far left, um, you know, as I mentioned, we do a lot of this SDK development and NPU development on, uh, uh, you know, on using the simulator. And we have uh, UT automation there. Um, and then, obviously, then we build the 8,000 chassis, multiple form factors, integrate the MPU, the SDK, the XR, and then we do a significant amount of testing there. Um, we then repeat that exercise using Sonic uh, test framework, uh, using the same engine, so it's the Cisco 8000 and over, but the Sonic um, uh, OS on top of it. And finally, what we do is then uh, just swap out the chassis uh, to a simpler uh, chassis, but still reuse the same MPU SDK and then we run the sonic management on top of that. And, and then you get the tar file. So that's how the, we're going about testing it. Um, so okay, how would you use this? You know, what's, the, what's, what's in it for me? Um, obviously on the far left is what I just described. You get this thing, you could, you could just sit here, you say, you know what, I have the VS, you can replace any VS you have today with this one if you wanna use the, um, our data plane basically, and our SDK. 
um, and you could use it in educational, whatever, development, et cetera. Now, if you were on the hardware track, right, uh, let's say you were ISV or you actually used some Cisco hardware and you were doing your own derivative, uh, you could then take upgrade to the, uh, the 8000 simulator, which is a hardware simulator, same MPU, but you have a real chassis. You'll use that code base, repeat the same exercise, sonic management, et cetera. And now you were extremely confident that whatever you develop will probably run on a Cisco hardware. And you didn't spend any money, you just accept for your PC, right? So you're up to here, you can just be iterating. And uh, finally, if you actually were a customer or plan to use uh, 8000 hardware, you could, you could then use that same binary just compiled in the middle step and run on hardware and validate. That's optional, but you could be iterating on the first two and it costs almost nothing. Um, so anyway, that's uh, all I had to share with. I didn't have any call to actions. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> all right, that's all I had. Thank you.